So first service, um, I, I said something to this effect, and I feel the need to say it again. I hate being a repeat. Uh, I hate repeating the same thing twice, even though that's basically first and second service. I was overcome with um, really a reminder of the faithfulness of God. We sing songs every Sunday. Sometimes we forget what we're singing, who we're singing to, why we're singing it. And my goodness, if you've forgotten, ask God to give you a fresh revelation. Ask for a fresh reminder of the personal God, Jesus, personally saving you, helping you, loving you. So we are reminded, because I, I don't know about you, I'm not perfect, maybe some of you are, as Mike says, you know, spread your rings, fly around, but I need a reminder of how amazing Jesus is, I need a reminder of why I sing, I need a reminder, and that's why I go to the Word, and that's why we come here, to encourage one another, right? Not what I'm preaching about, but I don't care. <laughs> I think it's important. Uh, Lord Jesus, I ask for you to help me. So today, if you can't tell by that one word up there, I want to talk about intentional. This is going to be a challenging word. It is not, for anybody visiting, it is not, if you don't believe in Jesus, that is fine. That's where you are? Okay. I'm glad you're here. But this is for those who profess to believe in Jesus, profess to be a believer, profess. Just so we're clear. Last week, Mr. Joe Cornwell, sitting over there in the corner, said the gospel was simple. I would agree. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Simple. And God does make things simple in the word. He does. Sometimes we overcomplicate the word because we're human. And us trying to guess what God is thinking is hilarious. It really is. You know, I said it in first service. It's kind of like, you know, those billboards you see in like uh, cop shows where they're trying to figure out who done it. That's what we're trying to figure out what God's doing. It's impossible, though. <laughs> but where we overcomplicate, Jesus simplifies again. He reiterates in his word the gospel because he's intentional. Oh, look, there's a couple more Bible verses about the gospel. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gospel is said throughout the entire Bible, not just New Testament, but Old Testament too, because Jesus is intentional. With everything he said, with everything he did, everything in his word, he put it in there. He said those things. He did those things for a reason. He never did anything by happenstance. He never did anything just because he knew what he was doing. He still knows what he's doing. And we forget that. We forget that Jesus is intentional. And when I say we, I want to make sure everything I say today applies to me. 100% applies to Pastor Mike, every elder. It applies to all of us as Christians, as professing Jesus believers. He was intentional about everything he said. And a big part of it is, I mean, there's like, there's so many parts of it. I can't, I can't even dissect it. The Bible's huge for a reason. Because, I mean, honestly, I don't know how many of you could just roll off the tongue with every single Bible verse on hand, but I only know, like, I think one person that could do that, and they're pretty old because they spent their entire life studying the Bible. There's so much in the Bible, we could spend our whole lives studying it and never fully comprehend who God is. Again, we can get an idea we got a great idea, enough to give our, dedicate our lives to him, the character of God, but can't fathom who God is fully. But he knew what was coming. Jesus knew what was coming for all of us who believe. <clears throat> yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and, when, and revile you, <clears throat> and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. 
Look at where we are today. I said this in the first service, I'll say it again. I grew up and I was alive for when cell phones started to become affordable, and then when cell phones started to become smart, quote unquote, started to become smartphones. I was alive for that. I have seen a lot of changes in 20 years. I've seen a lot of changes in 10 years. I've even seen changes in the past five years. If you are a Christian and you speak any part of your faith, you're labeled pretty much from the get-go as an evil, racist, bigoted, homophobic person. That's what happens a lot of the time. And I just chose four. There's an endless amount of mocking that can be done because you say, I love Jesus, because you have given your life. People don't understand that. How can we expect people who aren't kingdom-minded to understand kingdom-minded things? We can't. I don't hold them to that standard, and neither should you. None of us should. They don't understand those things, so they're going to label us. But it's getting scary. It's moving in that direction. It's accelerating at a very fast rate. I hope you guys see that. As Christians, we're called to not be a part of the culture, but are we called to be aware of it? So we could talk to the people who are living in it, who are deceived by it. We're supposed to know these things, not cower away from them. Jesus was intentional about telling us these things because he knew that we would face days like today. And I can't imagine what's going to happen in 10 years. Can't imagine. It's scary. Because of Jesus' intentional ways, okay, he also knew that we would need to speak the truth in love. We need to speak the truth as Christians. We are called to do that. We're called to be intentional with that. Jesus was intentional about making sure that we spoke the truth in love because a lot of people could just say, well, Jesus is Lord and, and you know, be adversarial about it. If you meet somebody who's Catholic and you go, well, Mary's not blah, 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 or Saint whoever, you're not supposed to pray to them. Like, I could easily do that. I can go tit for tat with any, any Catholic. There are a lot of people in here could do that in terms of telling them they're wrong. Is that the truth in love? After a certain point in a relationship, it certainly can be. But just right off the bat, not often. Ephesians 4.15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head of Christ. Intentionally, Jesus put that in the Bible. Why? Because he knew that a lot of us would be adversarial. That we like to flex our knowledge and our, 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 our I guess you could say, our proverbial muscles. A lot of us do like to do that. But if it's not in love, what is it? It's Nothing. It's a clanging symbol, as another Bible, uh, uh, Bible verse would say. Jesus was really intentional about everything he put in. I'm going to keep saying that word intentional because we need to get that. I need to get that. He was intentional about certain commands. Does the New Testament have commands? Does anybody know that answer? Yeah, it does. It's so crazy. The Old Testament, it didn't die with the Old Testament. Here's a good one. I love this one. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This was intentionally put in there. Why? Because, quite frankly, Jesus was all about people. He wanted his people to go and love on other people. How do you love somebody? You tell them the truth. You tell them in love. And we don't just tell somebody and be like, hey, Jesus is Lord, bye. You have a great day. No, you go and you show them what that means. You can show them in the word. You can show them through action. There's a lot of things that can be done. But we associate this with missions work, which is not wrong. I, I did missions work myself. Me and my wife met in missions work. The fact is, is that you don't have to go across the sea, across the ocean, to make disciples, and that's one thing that the Western church does lack, is actually making disciples. What does that mean? Well, if we dive deeper into the word disciple, mathetes, which means um, it describes a person who learns from another by instruction, whether formal or informal. Discipleship includes the idea of one who intentionally learns by inquiry and observation, and thus mathetes is more than a mere pupil. A mathetes describes an adherent of a teacher. So I think Jesus was intentional when he chose the word disciple. This is simple, right? It's simple for all of us? Hmm. I would agree. 
In practice, it's a little hard. Because you have to deal with people. We all like dealing with people, don't we? Black Friday? That's a great, that's a great depiction of the human condition. <laughs> I'll put it that way. I did not go out. I did that once in New York. I'll never do it again. Long time ago. I was a young man. But I want you to notice something with the Bible verse of go. Does it say go if you feel like it? Does it say it? You could say no. No. Does it say go depending on who it is? No. Does it say go depending on the people group? No. It says go. There's nothing, there's no condition on that. It's just go and make disciples. I would qualify this as a command. And here's something really interesting. Jesus was intentional about what he said in his word about commandments. Oh, and look, both of these are New Testament. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. Oh, there it is again. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Oh, wow. Wow. Seems that someone knew what they were doing. So I would say go and make disciples qualifies as a command. And we want to keep that. As Christians, we're called to keep his commandments because we, and I say this with the utmost love for you guys, we supposedly love him, don't we? I say supposedly because we're going to be able to see if you love Christ or not by our fruit. Any, and you guys know, anybody who doesn't live according to Jesus, according to his ways, according to his life, they look at us and go, okay, what are they doing? He just said a curse word. Dirty, filthy, rotten Christian. It happens all the time. We're under a magnifying glass. Are we not? And in obedience, because the disciples, we knew the original disciples, we knew they loved the Lord, right? They loved Jesus. I mean, they walked with the guy. They all screwed up, but they all love him. And they obeyed that commandment to the point where it changed the face of the entire globe. Why do you think we celebrate Christmas in December? It's not because Jesus was born in December. You can go ahead and look it up. It's obedience it's them being intentional with being obedient as far as making disciples. They were intentional with what they did, intentional where they went, intentional with how they spoke. You think Paul was going to Gentiles talking about the law when they didn't live by it? Didn't happen. Talk to Jews like that. Talk to Gentiles a completely different way. This is one way we can be intentional, is by making disciples here at home. trying to think of how to phrase this. I have it on paper, but who cares? If we are not intentional and we're not imitating Jesus, wasn't Jesus intentional? I have to check myself when it comes to a lot of things. How many here are married? Raise your hand. How many of you fight with your spouse? Raise your hand. If you don't raise your hand, you're lying. <laughs> I totally do. Luckily, not frequently anymore. We have some years under our belt. Years don't mean quality, but we have some years. And sometimes we're not intentional when we fight. And sometimes i got to pause and say, what are we doing? Sometimes she's got to pause and say, what are we doing? And we go, we don't know. And we go, okay, so let's stop. <laughs> I know I just want to yell at you right now. It's not right. What was this about? Happens all the time. <clears throat> but the reason, one of the reasons that we have such a, dare I say, fear of making disciples, a fear, is because fear, man, it's a big one. It's a big one. And Jesus was intentional about talking about this. Both Old and New Testament, 
The fear of man brings a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. If the Lord is on my side, I will not fear. What can man do to me? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. I love that last one, but, you know, it's one of those Bible verses that lost some of its potency in the Western church because people, like, throw it out like it's, uh, you know, God has a plan for your life. It's like, cool, thanks. It's one of these two. It loses its potency, but the fact is, is how many people here are scared of their friends? Of actually being labeled a freak, being labeled a bigot, homophobe, racist, because you say, hey, I love Jesus. I'm not going to participate in that. Hey, guys, I love you, but I can't do that. Why not? Because Jesus asked me not to, and I love him more than I love you. How many people are scared to do these things in their job? I'm not talking about in your job, like stand up on your desk and be like, Jesus, blah, blah, blah. No. At your job, your work should be a light. You should be the hardest working one of anybody. And, be, and Bus goes, what's this? Well, I work for Jesus first and foremost, sir. Then I work for you. That's why I'm able to do this efficiently more than others. Because Jesus gives me the power to. Or families. So many people are scared to tell their families or to live their life out in front of their families the way that Jesus calls you to because you're scared of what they're going to say, what they're going to do, how they're going to react. We have a fear of man that plagues the Western church, guys. Does it rise up in me? Yeah, it does. If I said I didn't have one, that'd be foolish. Can I say it's very minimal because of what Jesus has done to me? Yes. If you ever see me on an average day, I do not dress like this. <laughs> Because I don't care, not about my appearance, but I don't care what other people may think of me in terms of a religious spirit walking around going, well, why is this guy a youth pastor? He's wearing sweats. I don't care. I, used to, I said this in the first service. I'll say it again. When I was younger and I was rebellious and I was on drugs and I was drinking and doing all that stuff, my favorite phrase was I don't care. That was my favorite phrase to say. But I'd say it in the faces of my teachers. I'd say it in the faces of my parents. I'd say it in the faces of basically any authority figure that was put in front of me. Like, don't you care that you did this? No, I don't. I don't care. Now, with redemption in Christ, I can say I don't care about what man thinks. I still get to say the same phrase with a new meaning in heart. It's kind of funny how that works out. God redeems things. Even the phrase, I don't care. And I don't. And even if I don't feel that every day, I get to say it, and I get to go, okay, God, help me not care what man thinks. Help me care what you think more. Help me care about what you think more than what I think. It makes it simple. I'm going to keep coming back to what Joel said because I loved it. This is pretty simple. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. In the Lord. Not man, not Pastor Mike, not Andrew, though I could trust Andrew. Um, but not any of the elders, none of them. Just trust in the Lord. I said this in the first service as well. I'm going to say it again. If we are pieces of clay to be shaped by the Lord, right? You guys know that Bible verse, right? Are you going to stand before Jesus as a piece of clay, and you're going to go, well, Jesus, I didn't do that because I really cared about what this piece of clay thought of me. That would be very interesting to see. I believe Jesus has the best sense of humor out of anybody on the face of the planet, because we're made in his image. And he's probably got the best sense of humor. I can't imagine how that would turn out. I think that would be hilarious. I really do. But he was intentional about these things, because he knew that we would need to not have a fear of man. Why? Because of where we're heading. I'm waiting for the day. I'm waiting for the day where Christians are hunted down. And I say that with the utmost hope that it doesn't happen in my lifetime or any of my children's lifetime. Do you guys know that in Canada, Christians who preach on the street are actually locked up and fined, some sentenced? Because in Canada, it is not freedom of speech there. You can't say anything that can be regarded as hate speech. That is something that happens there right now. Comedians who have absolutely no attachment to Jesus, who are just making jokes, are getting fined, put before tribunals, jailed, because of what could be regarded as hate speech. So what happens when Christianity 
not just in Canada, but also in the US and the entire world, is regarded as hateful speech. Because we live, we, we live and profess, hopefully we live and profess both of those things where we make Jesus our Lord and Savior. Lord means something different than Savior. Where we actually walk these things out and people see that we live by a different standard. People not living by that standard are going to grow more hateful and more hateful. It's already happened. And I'm not saying this to make anybody upset. I'm saying this because it's happening right now. As Christians, we're called to be aware of it, to pray into it, are we not? Almost like be intentional. Go figure. When it comes to the intention, uh, being intentional with that verse, go and make disciples, a lot of us are not intentional. I know that I've had to make myself more intentional and more intentional and more intentional in every interaction that I have. I really try. I really ask the Lord for strength because I deal with a lot of people where being intentional is incredibly difficult. And if any of you have dealt with people, you know it's difficult. People are difficult. Jesus loved them. I'm called to love them. We're called to love them. But he was also intentional, not only about making disciples, but living out the word. Here we go. Oh, this is a good one. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before, uh, so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This was intentionally put in the Bible. No mistakes. We're called to be light and not to hide it. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Walk and live in the light of the Lord. Again, that's intentional. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Wow. Crooked and perverse generation. He was intentional with that, wasn't he? Shine his lights in the world. I think it's in there. It's in there. You shine as lights in the world. Huh. So no shine at home, but in the world. He was intentional about it. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Walk in the light and you're cleansed from sin. I think that's pretty intentional as well. Jesus was intentional in everything he did, everything he said, everything. The Bible was not put together by accident. It wasn't put together by men just trying to figure out what like, worked the best. I don't know how many people know about the Apographa. Those were inspired but not God sent, like basically books written by other men. That didn't make it in. Why? Those were good books. There's lots of great writings. The Bible was specifically put together because Jesus was intentional about what went in there. <clears throat> Can you hit the lights, please? So, I know so many preachers have used this example, but I'm going to use it. Here's a light. It's electric. I don't want to damage the stage because Nancy might, you know, come after me. Love you, Nancy. But... This is the simple gospel right here. Once you give your life over to Jesus, you get one of these. Oh, it's inside. Boom, 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 boom. Right? You get one of these. And I can go about my merry way. Tra la la la. I can go about my merry way. And oh, if I walk down here, I can walk right by Nancy. Oh, I see Nancy. Hi, Nancy. And then my light can shine on her. Right? Right. I can walk over all the way to the back and see Diana. And say, hey, Diana, let my light shine on Diana and start talking to her. I could do that all day long. I can walk around with my light. But around my candle, there's no darkness, right? I can't see Wesley crouched over on the stairs at the recording booth. If I want to see Wesley, then I have to walk over to him with my light in one of the darkest areas of the room. If I want to see Clay, I have to walk right over to Clay. 
with my light. I have to walk into an area of the room that's dark with this light. If I don't do that, if I happen to run into you, then the light will shine on your face and then we can have a conversation. Right now, I'm flying blind with most of you. The only per person that can probably see me is you. A little bit. You know, I can start talking like this. This is more pious, right? No? Okay. My point is, I could be intentional with this light. Hmm. A little soundtrack. I'll take it. So, I could be intentional with this light. And no matter where I go in this room, none of the darkness that's in this room is going to snuff this out, is it? And when you have an understanding that it works that way with Jesus, oh, look. All right, it's a clapper. Um, <laughs> it's the same way with Jesus, is it not? It's the same way with Jesus. If you are intentional with your light, if you walk into the darkest places, Nothing can overcome the light that's inside you because Jesus is more powerful than anything on the planet. I don't care what you have, what example you can give. He is more powerful than anything on the planet, period. You can walk in front of a blood-dripping Satanist who has just committed horrific acts. It doesn't matter. You have the light. You have no need to fear. You have no need to fear anything if you truly are following Jesus. It is a very difficult thing to get to that place. But you know what? That's why Jesus knew and was intentional about talking about making disciples. I am a young man. I'm an elder. I do not take that lightly. I really don't. I do not take that lightly. And I know there are people in here who really don't like it. And that's fine. Maybe not in here. Maybe just in this church. I love you. And you know what? I still go under the tutelage of Pastor Mike. I still go under the tutelage of Andrew. I still go under the tutelage of any person who is older than me who can impart wisdom using the word. Any person. We are all called to be disciples. We're all called to encourage one another. We're all called to that. That means having some humility. That means I got to learn from Pastor Mike, who I love him. But sometimes we're like sandpaper. It's a lot of fun. I'm telling you, it could be a reality show. Some people have observed it, and it's really, really hilarious. Also frustrating. But I learned from him. And a lot of the time, it takes me shutting up. I'm going, all right, you've been doing this a lot longer than me. You've lived a lot longer than me. You know something I don't. I have to be intentional with how I lead. I have to be intentional. Here, let me bring it home. Not how I lead as a pastor, not how I lead as a youth pastor, how I lead my wife, how I lead my family. That's for everyone in here. <clears throat> and if we aren't intentional, if we have too much fear of man to be intentional with our life, you could be intentional with going to the grocery store. You're bringing your light to the grocery store. You can be intentional, like, okay, who needs it? Who needs it? And you ask the Holy Spirit, does anyone in here need prayer? What do I need to do? Tell me. It could be the bank. It could be your waitress or waiter. It could be anybody. Be intentional. I'm going to show a video real quick, and then I'm going to come back up here to close. About two months ago, I had a dream. I have no idea what the dream was. I woke up with this idea. I attribute it to Christ because it was so far out of the realm of regular for me. I just have to attribute it to Christ. Um, myself and a group of us, we decided to be intentional with the Halloween season. Um, I've had discussions with people about this. I am not for Halloween. I do believe it is evil. Uh, we at this church do not celebrate it because of its origins and because of what's committed on that night. If you have a problem with that, go look it up yourself. That's fine. We'll love you anyway. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm going to say go look it up yourself. Then you know what kind of decisions you make. And so me and a group of people went out um, to a couple places. You're about to see it. I'll tell you right now. I, do not, I did not know when we recorded this, I did not know what God wanted to do with it. 
I didn't like think of this sermon two months ago and go, okay, I'm going to prepare. Like it didn't happen like that. Um, I literally made this video and I'm like, I, I got all this footage. I had no idea what God wanted to do with it. Then I was like, oh, and this was like a week ago. This is why it was made. It was made to encourage us. And so this is why I believe we were supposed to do this. So can you play that video, please? So I work at Cash Supply. Okay. I'm okay. a cashier and freight. We're on our feet 24/7. Oh, yeah. No. Except for I worked at Bed Bath and Beyond. I was at I was a cashier. Yeah. Oh, eight hours a day. Mm. Yeah. No. I also crawl around out here when I can. Really? Yeah. And I have a bad knee. Okay. Okay. I gotta have surgery on it eventually. Really? Yep. What's wrong with it? Uh, well, the hospital said I hyperextended it, but that doesn't turn out to be the case because when I initially injured it. I've had it collapse on me about 10 plus times really? since then, and that was coming up on three and a half, maybe four years ago now. No kidding. Yeah, and it still does it. Okay. Well, it hurts. Listen, I know this is weird, but would you mind if I prayed for it? Is sure. Okay? In, yeah. It's in Jesus' name, I okay. promise. <laughs> I'm Christian. Which one? What's your name? Which one? Savannah. Savannah? I'm Michael. Hi, Michael. Nice to meet you. Nice this to meet one you. Right here? Yes. Okay. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for Savannah. I thank you, Lord, for her heart. It did get warm. Can I pray for one more time? Yes. How's it feel? Right now, it feels great. You got the mobility? The mobility? Feels a little bit better? Feels better? Feels the same as my other knee right now. Really? Yeah. Well, awesome. That's Jesus. What do you think of all this stuff about death and everything? It's great. It's scary. Yeah. It's Does all it fascinate good. you? It's Why? a good Halloween vibe. Do you believe in, in Satan? Of course, yes. Yeah. Do you believe there's a devil? Do you doubt. believe there's a God? Yep. Yes. Not a doubt. What do you think happens to you after you die? Uh, actually, you got judged to see if you did good or bad in life and uh, what I have in your house. Do you, have a, you need healing in your body? Oh. Yeah. You do? For what? Uh, I don't know. I you have high blood pressure or something or what? Oh, uh, no. I don't know. I have like a really heavy breathing problem. Breathing problem? Yeah, like I really like, I breathe heavy. Like, okay, you don't vape or anything? No. Okay, I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to ask Jesus Christ to heal your breathing problem. And when I do, I want you to breathe in deep at least three times and tell me if you feel a difference. Lord Jesus, you're the healer, I'm not. Jesus, Henry believes in you. He's got this breathing problem. Jesus, I ask you to heal his breathing problem right now in Jesus' name. Now take three deep breaths. Three deep ones and let them out. Now Henry, I'm not a healer, okay? 
I can't heal anybody. But so don't lie to me. Tell me the truth. Is it better or is it not? Nothing different. My nose just cleared up. Your nose just cleared up. Yeah. Can I get some lights, please? Wesley, you can come on up. See, we went out not to show off. We didn't go out because we think we're so great, because I know I'm not great. We went out intentionally to plant seeds, intentionally to listen to the Holy Spirit, intentionally to go and pray for people that would never expect a Christian to walk through those doors and not participate. We did. <clears throat> Why can't we be intentional in life? We're called to be the light of the world, shine our light before men. Here's a crazy thought. What if we were intentional with our light, even with each other? Even with each other. I'll say it one more time. Even with each other, with your time, with your finances, we have the, you know, help the elevate family type deal, being intentional with your finances. If you really feel, let, let's just say, I'm going to put a plug in for the youth. If you want to be intentional with your finances, you go, I really want to help the youth. I've had people actually give me a check and go, I want this specifically to go to a foster kid. I said, great, I got eight. People give intentionally. To be intentional with friends. Young people. There's a fear of being judged more now than ever before. There really is. Being intentional with your friends that aren't Christian. Being intentional with coworkers, everybody, myself included, coworkers that aren't Christian. Being intentional with them. Are you living according to what Jesus asks you to live? If you love him, keep his commandments. Are you living like you love him? And other people are seeing that because you're being intentional with where you are, with who's around you, with what you're doing, walking into anywhere in life, just doing life. You can walk around aimlessly with your light, and when it shines on people, you can do something about it, or you could be intentional with it. And are you going to let the fear of man or a fear dictate to you what you do with the light? Are you going to let fear control you? I'm not saying, let me make sure I'm perfectly clear, I'm not saying go stand on top of the fruit aisle, you know, one of the fruit stands in high V and start preaching the word. I'm not saying that. Unless God calls you to it, which would be quite interesting. But are you going to let fear of man stop you or fear in general stop you from sharing the word with someone who needs it? Are you going to be intentional with your time? Time is one of those things that none of us can ever get back, right? What are you doing with it? I'm going to give a shout out to my wife because, well, I married her, so I think she's awesome already. But she's intentional. I have, I have a gym in my house. I try to work out as many days as I can. I have youth or young college age guys who go to Escalate over my house every single day almost. My wife is very intentional about letting them into our house. Youth smell. They just do. Unless they're getting clinical, like deodorant, they just omit an odor that is not pleasing to the Lord. <laughs> it's 100% true. The fact is, is that my wife lets them in. She's intentional with her generosity in terms of her home, her privacy. She gives that up. Hospitality, thank you. Are we intentional with our time? If I see somebody, and I've, I've, I mean, I'm including anybody, somebody who is, I feel, if you never have felt this way, you are better than I. I feel is not worth my time. I see somebody either come to the church, or I see somebody come to my car, because I also drive taxi, uh, that's half my, half my job is driving uh, for a taxi for a living. Um, if I see someone come in, I go, this person's not worth my time. They're cursing up a storm. They're smoking uh, cigarettes when they're not in the car. Or this person's in here. They don't care. They're not listening. Blah, 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 blah. 
do I go, okay, I'm gonna be intentional, I'm gonna give this person some of my time, however much it is. I have to be intentional regardless of what I can see the outcome being. What I can see, because honestly, the one variable that scientists can't account for, uh, can't account for, the one variable that I can't account for, and the one variable that none of you can account for is what the Holy Spirit's gonna do. Because we don't know. I can give my time to someone who looks like a complete reject and that person's life get turned around completely. And all of a sudden, I feel like an idiot. Because I go, how, <laughs> what am I doing that I'm doubting what you could do if I'm intentional, if I try to live like you lived, live intentionally? Don't let fear of man, fear of what everyone else thinks, don't care what they think. You know, we're gonna do something weird. Turn to the person next to you and say, I don't care what you think. Say, I care what God thinks. <laughs> Do we care about what God thinks, wants, desires, longs for more than your wife, men? More than your husband, ladies? More than your mom or dad? Children, do you care about what God wants and thinks and desires more? Are you going to be intentional with everything you do, including being a light to the Christians next to you? You could be a light to them. It inspires them when you do something different, more Christ-centered with your finances. If you are not, let's say someone's gossiping, you don't join in, that's a light to your fellow Christians. That's a light right there. I'm not going to join in with this gossip. Guys, this person, we don't know what's going on. Let's find out what's going on before we keep talking. No one likes to be that person, but Jesus loves to be that person. Jesus loved to be the person that stood up for righteousness. Sometimes we are scared to. I go in and out, depending on the company I'm around. I'd like to never do it. I like to say I never do it. Can't say that. Can't make that claim. I need Jesus to help me to run away from the fear of man. Always. We all do. We need to be intentional with the light that Jesus has put in us. It's not just a light to walk around with. It's not just a self-serving thing. Heaven is not the goal. The goal is to live this life with Jesus intentionally with everything we do. To be here for the people, to spread the fame of Jesus, to make disciples. You can't make disciples if you're not intentional. You don't, <laughs> anybody ever been to Ikea? Come on. Anybody ever heard of Ikea? Don't go there. Your sending is not wrong. I have, I have grace. I have grace for people a lot of the time. I have no grace for furniture and inanimate objects. None. You want to push my patience? Go ahead and tell me to build something. I don't have it. Ask my wife. She can't talk to me if I'm trying to build something. I need a lot of grace for that stuff. But you don't go in to opening a package from Ikea to build, let's say, a shelf, and you don't go, hmm, I hope this works out. We'll see if I get everything right. No, you go in intentionally. You intentionally look at the instructions. You intentionally put pieces together because you know the end result is going to be this nice shelf that will break in two years. If we don't do other things that we care about, we, we love things, right? We love our kids. We're intentional with our kids. We're intentional with each other, people that we love. Why aren't we intentional with the things that Jesus loves? So my challenge to you guys, this is not to put anyone down. This is not to make people feel bad. This is because we are called as Christians to live by Jesus standards. I'm not even going to say higher standards. I'm going to say Jesus standards. That says it all. We're called to live by Jesus standards. We're called to be intentional. We're called to be a light. We're called to make disciples. We're called to not fear a man. Are we not? We're called to a lot of things. You can't do it on your own. I can't do it on my own. Do you know how many things we're called to? <laughs> we're called to so many things. It's hilarious. It's impossible without God. It's impossible without Jesus to be called and to do these things that he has called us to do unless we have Jesus incorporated into our lives as the most important thing above all else. That is something that is incredibly difficult and you need to be discipled by Jesus, by others, to even get a smidgen of that. So we're going to bow our heads, please, and I'm going to just pray and we're going to go. This is a challenge. I want you guys to really think about this. This is important. This is important stuff. 
with the times that we're living in, this is important stuff. Times will not revert. They're going to get worse. The Bible was intentional about telling us that. So Lord Jesus, we just come before you as a body of believers, different in every, <laughs> every way within the body of believers. Jesus, we thank you that you have given us the patience to not only put up with one another, but to love each other. You've given us the love that we need to actually unite under one roof of the Father's house and come before you in worship and come before you intentionally to actually encourage one another. We thank you for that. Father, I ask right now that this would stay, this would stick in the minds and hearts of everyone in here, especially myself, Lord, to be intentional, intentional with our time, with our wives, with our families, with our money, with our finances, our time, everything. Help us to be intentional about being a disciple of Jesus Christ first and foremost, Lord. I ask right now that you bless those in here. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. You are dismissed. Be careful as you leave. It's very slick out there.